Truman's decision not to use the A-bomb in the Korean War. Truman was still president by the time of the Korean War, a mere half-decade after the end of World War II. The Chinese entry in the Korean conflict against the UN forces almost pushed them out of the Korean Peninsula. Truman was again faced with the decision as to whether he should use the atomic bomb in Korea as he had in Japan. Truman now felt that this was a terrible weapon and it should not be used on innocent men, women, and children who had nothing to do with this military aggression. Later, Truman made these final comments on the use of nuclear weapons after the first test of the hydrogen bomb in January of 1953. He said in a statement that, quote, the wars of the future would be one in which a man could extinguish millions of lives at one blow, demolishing the great cities of the world, such a war is not a possible policy for a rational man. For the only world leader who dropped a nuclear bomb in anger, this statement showed that he now felt that the atomic bomb was not a normal weapon of war. The atomic tests on military units to see the effects of blast radiations on the nuclear battlefield environment. Camp Desert Rock is about 63 miles north of Las Vegas. The camp was used by the United States troops during several atomic weapons tests in the 50s. These troops were used in a test to simulate combat on the atomic battlefield. The main point of this test was to analyze the nuclear radiation exposure for a military participant in the atomic battlefield. As can be concluded by the title of the report, Analysis of Radiation Exposure for Troop Observers, Exercise Desert Rock 5 and Operations Upshot Not Hole, they concluded that all the Desert Rock observers who participated in the operation were not exposed to radiation doses that exceeded the established criteria. In general, it seems that the purpose of these tests was to see all the implications of the effects of nuclear weapons on the battlefield. Though they concluded that the radiation was acceptable, the worldview in the years to come was generally otherwise. The legacy of Hiroshima and Nagasaki at the showdown during the Cuban Missile Crisis. In 1962, the Cuban Missile Crisis was the closest the world ever came to nuclear war. The United States Armed Forces were at their highest state of readiness ever, and the Soviet field commanders in Cuba were prepared to use battlefield nuclear weapons to defend the island if it was invaded. Given that, the United States would have had no choice but to retaliate with nuclear devices on the Soviet soil. Luckily, Thanks to the cool head thinking of two men, President John F. Kennedy and Premier Nikita Khrushchev, war was averted. Khrushchev, in a personal letter at the height of the crisis, wrote to Kennedy and tried to frankly state the current situation and find a safe solution. In his letter to Kennedy, he wrote, quote, you and I should not now pull on the ends of the rope in which you have tied the knot of war. Because the harder you and I pull, the tighter the knot will become. And a time may come when this knot is tied so tight that a person who tied it is no longer capable of untying it. 
and then the knot will have to be cut. What that would mean, I need not explain to you, because you yourself understand perfectly what dread forces our two countries possess. I propose you will declare that the United States will not invade Cuba with its troops. Then the presence of our military specialists in Cuba will disappear." Unquote. Nine months after the crisis ended, Kennedy and Khrushchev signed an agreement to ban nuclear testing in the atmosphere. It is clear that these two leaders believed that this crisis would have destroyed civilization. Conclusion as to why Truman's decision was correct for his time and as a matter of history over these last six decades. I think that this review of this one historic decision by the United States shows that executive decision making is a difficult process for a world leader. Many times these decisions are made under serious time constraints. A leader must often depend totally on their advisors and their intelligence sources. Failure of any of these governmental components can often have the most severe outcomes. The United States during World War II made many mistakes in its conduct of this total war. While I don't think this can ever be avoided, the United States should always strive to capture the high moral ground as long as doing so is still in our country's self-interest. The saving of at least 20,000 to 46,000 soldiers' lives that would have been lost invading Japan might be viewed by many as in the country's self-interest. Reviewing the legacy of the Truman decision as it played out during the Cuban Missile Crisis shows that the knowledge of the horrors that occurred in Hiroshima and Nagasaki after dropping of the weaker A-bombs in 1945 might have prevented the use of the much more powerful H-bomb during the 1962 Cuban Missile Crisis. From that single, potentially devastating crisis, the decision by Truman was the correct decision given a review of the facts leading up to that decision and in light of more than the six decades of history since that decision.